Spotlight from Zumtobel. It's a versatile and superbly efficient lighting product that blends fantastically well with modern architecture, producing uh, a minimalist ribbon of light as these images show. We have produced this short video to guide you, the installer, through the installation of slot light to ensure you end up with a perfect minimalist ribbon of light that blends superbly with the architecture of the building. One of the most important factors in the installation of slot light is for you to be in possession of the final architect's dimension construction drawings and to issue those to us so that we can issue a correct final quotation. One of the first and most important things to think about in the in installation of slot light is to make sure you have all the necessary components to read the instructions and to understand how those components are used and where they will be fitted. The main component of slot light is the extruded aluminium profile as shown in this short sample section here. When this profile is delivered to site it will be delivered complete with the diffuser. The diffuser should be marked to show exactly which piece of extrusion it came from because it will need to be fitted back into exactly the correct piece of extrusion and then it should be removed and stored safely in a clean area. Another important component of slot light are the end caps. This is how they're delivered in a set of two. These are die cast aluminium end caps and these make off the end of the extrusion. They're fixed using the four fixing screws also supplied. You'll see in a minute how to fix those. And also in the same package are two diffuser retaining brackets. To fit the end cap, these sections and the bottom section needs to be aligned with the extrusion. And then the end cap is simply slid into place Screws are fitted into the linear thread and tightened accordingly. There are three components required to join pieces of extrusion. The main joining bracket shown here and two fillet plates. And these are easy to assemble. The fillet plate is slid into the extrusion and the grub screws are tightened. Similarly, there are screws at each end of the main joining bracket and that's tightened up and then it's simply slotted together. The grub screw is tightened, the other screw on the main fixing plate is tightened and that's finished. This is a fixing bracket that is used to recess slot light into a ceiling. It comes in a set of two and is fixed above the cut aperture that slot light is to be fitted into. The recessed ceiling bracket needs to be installed in the ceiling, on top of the ceiling. And it's important to note that this must align with the uh, pre-made knockouts in the slot light system. You can get the dimensions of these from the installation instructions. And the end result should look like this. Here's the slot light extruded body. This is the ceiling bracket. This will be the level of the ceiling and the bracket securely holds the slot light extrusion in the cut aperture that you previously made. Once the extrusion has been securely fixed in place, the full length of run that you require, the next thing to fit is the wiring loom as we see here. And the wiring loom comes on a reel. Uh, it also comes supplied with these clips which are necessary to fix the wires into the back of the extrusion. These are essential for the correct operation of the system. What's also essential is that the plugs on the gear trays, which have a little bit of uh, tolerance in terms of their positioning, have to line up 
with the sockets on the wiring loom. So what you need to do there is to take the gear tray that you intend to fit, measure the approximate position of the plug on the gear tray, mark that on the back of the extrusion and then fit the socket on the wiring loom at exactly that point. Then the remainder of the cabling is trimmed to the correct length and the feed-in unit is clipped to the back of the extrusion uh, with the wires already inserted and then there is a knockout hole in the back of the extrusion for your incoming supply which is also wired into this same um, feed-in unit. This shows the wiring loom fitted into the slot light extrusion. The wiring loom is offered up into the extrusion and then it's clipped securely and neatly using these plastic clips that are supplied with the uh, wiring loom. Then the socket on the wiring loom that coincides with the plug on the gear tray is clipped into the back of the extrusion at the position previously marked and at the live feed in the cables are cut to the right length, made off, wired into the live feed and that also is clipped into the back of the extrusion. Once the wiring loom is installed you then need to move on to the gear trays. This is a, a gear tray here and what you need to do is first of all check to make sure the wiring loom is clipped securely and neatly into the back of the extrusion and the plug on the gear tray will then coincide with the socket on the wiring loom that you previously measured and fitted and this needs to be plugged together and then the gear tray checking to make sure there are no wires trapped needs to be offered into the extrusion and then clipped in and it's critically important to make sure it's cli clicked in twice two clicks and then make a visual check to make sure that the edge of the gear tray is parallel to one of the lines in the extrusion and that will ensure that the gear tray is properly clicked into place at all four positions. So the first gear tray has been installed and then we need to install subsequent gear trays and we use exactly the same method. We have the wiring loom installed, the plug on the gear tray mates up with the socket on the wiring loom and the gear tray clicks into place making sure that there are no trapped wires. Two clicks. What's important here is that the gear trays are butted up tight together. In this situation with the fl fluorescent version the fluorescent lamps overlap and it's important to make sure the white reflector of the gear tray is continuous. When you reach the end of the run of slot light that you're working on, um, you must clip the wiring loom into uh, a dead end device that we show here. That simply clamps over the cables and is pushed shut and then that clips into the back of the slot light extrusion as we've seen previously. To maximise the efficiency of slot light there is a, an optional reflector as we see here. Um, this comes complete with a plastic film coating that has to be removed before the installation is finally complete but it does help to protect the reflecting surface during uh, dirty installation works. This simply pushes onto the gear tray and is fixed with the screws provided. To make sure the slot light is evenly lit along its entire length, it's important to make sure that the fluorescent tubes overlap in the correct orientation. Here we see uh, the recommended Philips lamp with the label here and 
the next lamp on the next gear tray must be fitted with the label at the opposite end. Don't put labels together and don't put non-labeled ends together. Please refer to the installation instructions for more detail. The last thing to do before completing the uh, ribbon of slot light is to fit the diffuser. This is a simple thing to do. Uh, insert the diffuser fixing bracket that was supplied with the end caps about halfway into its clips on the end cap and then offer the diffuser up to the slot light system, slide it along above the bracket and then begin to clip the diffuser in all the way along and finally press the bracket until it's flush. When putting diffusers together it's important to leave a small gap. Uh, adjacent diffusers must have this tongue and groove arrangement and it has to be one tongue with one groove and when the adjacent diffuser is clipped in there must be a small gap. This allows for expansion of the diffusers as they, they heat up. The most important factor when coming to an installation of slot light is the ceiling. The ceiling has to be straight, level, true, with no twists and the cut aperture for slot light must be a minimum of 72 millimeters and that aperture again must be straight and true uh, with, uh, uh, with a strong edge so that it doesn't put any pressure on the extrusion of slot light.